Dost thou be thou erect or be made erect? Allow thee to live if thou art not such. Hey, what's up? Yeah, just hang out and do nothing. Yeah, sounds good. I'll be there in a sec. First, do nothing inconsiderately, nor without a purpose. Observe what thy nature requires, so far as thou art governed by nature only. No, because thou dost not live according to thy nature. Hey friends, welcome. By no means am I any expert on Stoicism. In fact, I recently started researching it and I was immediately fascinated. And I saw that a lot of the like self-development literature and uh, info I've been getting other places seems like it's rooted in Stoicism to some extent. And the theme seems to be, be good, uh, don't let others' opinions of you bother you. Don't let the things you can't change hinder your progress. And be purposeful and intentional in your actions and pursuits. And I'm thinking, yeah, I like the sound of that. So that's why I'm so excited for this week's stoic morning routine and potentially see how it will shift my mindset. I'm gonna leave most of the interpretations to the stoicism experts. Yeah, YouTube experts and focus on the practical implementation of a stoic morning ritual that you and I can comprehend and relate to as uh, stoicism noobs right although I have read this version of uh, meditations by Marcus Aurelius so I can't help myself but to sprinkle a little bit of my own interpretations and uh, thoughts along the way. So I thought I would bring forward a daily stoic reflection, which is something from meditations that uh, resonated with me or that I found valuable or interesting that I would like to share. I thought it couldn't be any more suiting place to film this than in nature itself. And for those of you who doesn't know, there are countless references to, to nature and what is natural in meditations. From my research, I found these steps that I will follow for the next week. And at the end, I'll tell you how it affected my life. I'm going to get up at the first sound of the alarm. And the first thing I'll do is to meditate. I'll split the meditation into three groups. The first is negative visualization. Is thinking about that I will meet people today that will be very impatient, that will have no understanding, that will be difficult to deal with. And going through and visualizing meeting these people and dealing with these people, is it will make you more prepared and less disappointed if you actually do meet them. And what if all the people you meet are nice and there's nothing negative about it? Then you'll have a pleasant surprise, I guess. Number two is reflecting on death. This, this one sounds really morbid. Stoics familiarize themselves with death by thinking about it daily. The main thing here, I, I assume, is being less fearful when you know death is going to happen at some point anyway. So accept what's going to happen and be more content when you're alive. So deep! It's more about the gratification than the actual dying. And the last step of the meditation part is visualize and reflect on the day ahead. Every central part of this book is live according to your nature, your purpose. So you should be really aware of what are you supposed to do. At any moment he actually says that you should stop and think about if this is the right thing to do. So in order to do that you have to have a clear plan. So I'm going to plan out the day. And if it's one thing we know about Marcus Aurelius and what he did is that he did journal. Because this is actually his journal. It was not a book meant to be published or read by anyone else. It's just his personal journal. So I'm going to write down general reflections of the day before, the day that's coming, if there is something that, that has been bothering me. And I'll also write down what I'm grateful for, which is a big part of Stoicism. Meditating in the morning, it's not enough. You have to bring it with you throughout the day because Let's say if I meditate on meeting negative and difficult to deal with people, I need to be able to bring these thoughts back and get the benefit from them. Alright, it's time for my first daily stoic reflection. It is this sentence that I'll put on the screen now, because I don't want to even try to read that Shakespearean English. This basically says that 
be intentional and be thoughtful in every action you do. And I think this could be valuable for me in so many aspects, just getting coffee. So many times I brew a coffee and I sit down, take one sip and then I leave it because I didn't really want it. Maybe I just wanted the break. Maybe I just just get a glass of water instead. I think this one says that don't waste your energy thinking about something someone else is doing wrong that you're not able to do anything about. Just accept it and move on. It will bring you no value to look around for someone to blame and trying to find a scapegoat. No matter how much good you do and how good you are, how nice you are, there will always be someone will laugh when you fail or as it says in meditations when you die <laughs> yeah haters gonna hate I guess when I meditate in the morning I find it really difficult to to stay concentrated on one thought just like in other kinds of meditation with headspace or it's really easy for the mind to drift off into other thoughts but what I found works really well against this is to whisper instead or just mumble for yourself instead of just thinking because then then you'll definitely stay with one train of thought and if you start whispering one thing and then you start whispering a different thing at the same time and then the third thing at that point i think it would be time to involve a psychiatrist this one is pretty self-explanatory but it can encourage us to reflect around those things that are, that are bothering us and maybe try to understand it a little bit better and if we understand it better we can see it in a different perspective and maybe that can relieve some of the negative feelings we have towards that issue. I think this is the most interesting DSR so far. We judge, act, relate and understand things based on our experiences and our sets of experiences will naturally be very individual. So when I think that people are doing weird things or acting in a weird way or understanding things wrong, it's maybe just that I have a different basis of understanding and if I put myself in their shoes and saw things from their perspective, it would seem right. I've become a real nature boy since I started this experiment. I think I haven't been this much out in nature in like 65 months. I'm really enjoying it. Nature is such a big part of Stoicism, so I thought this would be a good excuse to get out and explore the woods around, the, around my city. So this DSR basically says that if we believe that we're on the right path or have chosen the right thing to study or the right education, the right work, then we should not give in if other people are negative or skeptical. So if you believe that you're doing the right thing and you're on the right path and people around you are skeptical and tell you to do something else, first make sure that you're not doing anything criminal, anything illegal or anything that hurts other people. Then just keep doing you. There are multiple places in meditations that reference what I interpret to be minimalism. It says that we should remove useless things that are just laying around because it's sort of passively disturbing us so that we can get more mental capacity for the things that really matters. So, does a stoic morning work? In the past, if I was going for a run and it started raining, that was a completely acceptable excuse for me to just stay inside and skip that workout. But then I was made aware of the concept of taking more responsibility and not, and not get defeated by external factors outside of my own control. So I thought that is the weather going to keep me from my fitness goals and defeat me, basically? No. And it doesn't have to at all. I mean, it's one thing if you break your leg, but the weather? I didn't know at the time, but that's stoicism at its best. And it really changed how I behave. So for the morning reflection on death, I tried to visualize getting like a life-threatening disease or getting into an accident, but that's pretty depressing. That's not very fun. So like I mentioned in the beginning, this was this I treated this more like a way of showing gratitude and thinking about 
uh, that I appreciate life instead. For the negative visualization, I learned that it was best to have real life situations to think about because otherwise it will be too vague and hard to translate into real life when it actually does happen, when you actually are going to get the benefit from preparing to meet those negative people. And some days I, the only people I knew I would meet that day was like the cashier at the supermarket. I tried to visualize the most grumpy cashiers in the store, but they were so nice, so didn't get any use of that. Stoic philosophy in general talks a lot about how the obstacle is the way. And I've actually made a video where I made an experiment out of that exact premise that you can see here. And I challenge you to do something similar to what I did in that video or to do a, like a stoic week yourself to, to zoom out and maybe get a little different perspective of uh, one week in your life. 